In a previous video, I talked about how to actually derive this formula behind me, which is figuring out how many moles of cathode or anode material is gained or lost when a reaction is run for at a certain burn for a certain period of time, but we didn't actually put any numbers to it. So this video, we're going to start putting numbers to it so you can see how it all comes together. Now, I've changed the reaction on the board from this previous video. So before it was zinc and copper, but that was a really easy reaction. So let's go with something a bit more challenging. And that's the conversion of titanium plus four using copper to copper plus two in titanium. So we don't have these one to ones. It's one, two, two, one. In our cathode compartment, we're reducing titanium from plus four to zero. In our anode compartment, we're oxidizing copper from zero to plus two. How would we use this formula if we were given a problem? Well, you can be asked any part of this formula. You can be asked for current, you can be asked for time, and you can be asked for moles. So let's do a really straightforward problem. If we run this reaction, how much of the titanium anode is created, how much of the copper anode is removed. So to do this, we kind of need some numbers. So let's treat this as one amp for 60 seconds. So we're gonna say that this was run with one amp of current for 60 seconds. Well, for titanium and, and copper, it's all gonna kind of look the same. We had one amp of power we ran it for 60 seconds. What's gonna change based on titanium and copper are these numbers, is this number up here. But the number of electrons transferred, you just look at the reaction. We had titanium going from plus four to zero, so that's four electrons. For copper, because this is a balanced reaction, this should always be the same. So this number here for N is four. So we'll get one times 60 times 1.037 to negative five divided by four. How do we find the moles of titanium and the moles of copper? Well, if we want titanium, we just go to the reaction and we put the number in front of it. And in this case, it'll be one. If we want copper, we would put a two in. So if we want to figure out the moles of copper lost at the copper electrode, one times six times 1.03 to the negative seven times to the negative five, sorry, 1.037 times to the negative five times two divided by four. This will give us our moles of copper and to figure out how many grams of copper were lost in the electrode, which is convert from moles of copper to grams of copper. For titanium, one amp, 60 seconds, conversion factor, one over four, and then take those moles and convert them to grams. Now, the reason why this conversion factor up here is gonna keep changing is because it depends on the reaction. But we're always scaling this using the current to the number of electrons that were passed through the circuit. So if we were changed to two amps, we'd double how much we have. Conceptually though, it should make sense to you to say that we're gonna lose twice as many moles of copper as we do moles of titanium because the copper takes four electrons to react, whereas the copper only requires two. So this is how you practically apply this formula. Given a variable, solve for the unknown. These I and T are problem specific. The number of electrons transferred in depends on the reaction and whatever goes on top depends on what you're looking at. Are you looking for copper, titanium, anode, or cathode? This formula will always give you moles. It is up to you to know how to convert from moles to grams.